strawberry lemonade jam is what's cooking on the homestead. Here we are. Welcome to Hitch Chick Urban Homestead. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Hitch a Chick Urban Homestead. I'm Beth, and today we're doing something a little different. We're making jam. Now, most of you probably don't know, but I also have a little bit of a side business. It's called Jam and Jellies. That's the t-shirt, get it? So today, I'm preparing for the farmer's market, which will be in just a few days, and I'm out of jam. So come along. Okay, so I just discovered something just a short time ago. Did you know that if your jam or jelly doesn't quite set up the way you would like it, maybe it's a little too runny, such as the case of this lemon drop jam that I made. Um, did you know you can reprocess it? As long as you catch it within say a 24 hour period. Usually by then you get a good feel if it's going to be, um, I would refer to it as viable, but if it's going to set up to the desired thickness that you like, um, 24 hours is usually enough time. However, I didn't prefer how thin this is. I prefer a thicker jelly, so, I'm going to just um, reprocess the four jars that I have that didn't set up the way I wanted it. And I'm just going to use my crock pot, which also has a um, regular cook setting. Yeah, you can see this one even has liquid pouring out of it. It's just too runny. So we'll put that back in there. And the trick to getting it set up is you just want to add a couple of tablespoons of pectin. You don't want to add the whole box, otherwise you might end up, well, with a paste more than a jelly. So I've put all four of the lemon drop jellies in my pot and I decided since I'm reprocessing it anyway, why not go ahead and do something a little fun? And the other day at the farmer's market, someone had mentioned that he likes strawberry lemonade. And I thought, hmm, how about a strawberry lemonade jelly? Or since I'm using fresh strawberries, it becomes a jam. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have my food processor out and I'm just going to crush up my strawberries a little bit, and then I'll add them to the lemon jelly. And I'm going to pause the video while I do this because I'm sure you all know how to use a food processor, and we all know how noisy it can be. So give me a minute while I chop up these strawberries. Okay, strawberries are all chopped, and I left them fairly chunky. You want want to be able to see some of the strawberry in the uh, jam. So we'll just drop those in there. Give it a little stir. And I'm going to grab a plastic spoon because I don't want to scrape up the inside of my pot. I grabbed a wooden one instead. This is my favorite. So we'll give that a mix. Just like that. lunch going over. Today is jam making day and I have about seven different flavors to make. Okay, so 
since the lemon drop already has pectin in it, I'm only going to add three. Normally I would only add two, but with the strawberries being so liquidy, I think I'll add three just to make sure it sets. And then we'll give that a stir. And we're going to just let that set for, I let it set for about five minutes when I make a batch. With this already being mostly processed, I'll just let it sit for a couple minutes. I don't think the whole five minutes is necessary. So we'll just let that set. And what that does, it allows the pectin to melt into the fruit. So as you process, you don't end up with um, little clumps of pectin showing through your product. So in the meantime, while that's setting, in this pot, I would normally be doing this in my outdoor kitchen, but since Mark is um, building my porch, he kind of has his tools all organized out there, all over the place. So I'm going to do it inside because, well, I would rather him work on my porch than he have a clean outdoor kitchen. So uh, I'm using my electric pot and I have put my jars in um, just on simmer with warm water just to sterilize them. What I do, and I found it helps with a better result with my product, is I have a I have a jar that just has water in it because you don't want your jars rattling around, falling over, potentially cracking or break breaking. However, you don't want them so close that they touch and then clang in together and the same result happens. So I keep a jar just of water and it processes and reprocesses and reprocesses. I've used that same jar, gosh, for probably 20 different batches of jam and I never pop it open. I just leave it available as a place taker for my uh, hot water bath. And these are the jars. I just have them sitting in the simmering water. As I fill them, I'll just dump the water back in, fill them, and put them back in after I have sealed them up. So I think this is I believe the strawberries and the lemon have set long enough with the pectin. So I'm, I've got it turned on and I'm going to bring it back to a boil, fill the jars, put them in the hot water bath, and uh, we'll just process them into strawberry lemonade from lemon drop jelly. I'll bring it back when, when it's boiling. The strawberry lemonade jam has started to come to a boil. However, we want it to come to a rolling boil. boil. So we'll give it another couple minutes. And once it comes to a rolling boil, we'll let it continue boiling for two minutes. Normally at the final boiling stage when you do jam or jelly, you only need to boil it for a minute. However, since this is a redo and we want to make sure it does set up properly this time, we're going to let it boil for two minutes. So while that's doing its thing, we'll just kind of hang out. Okay, it is really boiling. We cannot stir it down. I have my timer and it's set for two minutes. So we'll just let that go for two minutes and we'll be able to put it in our jars. So what are your favorite jellies or jams? I would love to hear your ideas. My jam business is always looking for 
unique products. Um, this this week, my new release was a hot pepper sauce, and it's called Fire in the Hole Hot Pepper Sauce, and uh, it was a big seller. People loved it, especially when they found out that the peppers were grown in my own garden, and I dehydrated them. Okay, the timer's going off, and I'm just going to unplug my pot and give it another stir real quick. Let's get to putting it in jars. You always want to start out with impeccably clean and sanitized jars. Even though this is a product redo, I'm still using clean sterilized jars. I will also be using new lids. You cannot, or well, some people do, but you should not reuse any flat lid that has been previously sealed. Now when you fill your jar with the jam, you want to make sure you use a, some sort of gizmo to debubble. You don't want to leave air bubbles in there. And this is actually my debubbler. If you were watching my caning video, I mentioned I had lost it. Well, I lost it really good because I had to buy another one. So that just helps to get the air pockets out. And you want to fill your jars to within a quarter of an inch of the top. That's called leaving a head space. And on this particular instrument, it's really hard to, maybe that way, um, there are little teeth, if you will, that show um, the depth of your headspace. And since I want a quarter of an inch, this is a quarter of an inch, I will place it on my jar, and that looks just about right. I have a clean, damp rag. Whoop, that was dumb. Make sure you use either a cloth or a pot holder to hold the jars. They are very hot. And because this is very sugary, make sure you give that room a really good go around. And then take a clean lid and your rings. Try not to spill your product. Finger tight. And there you have the first jar ready to go into a hot water bath. And we'll just keep with this process, filling as many jars as we can. I'm hoping for six jars. That's just kind of my magic number, if you will. The bubble. Measure my head space, and I need just a little bit more. Just a few drops. Perfect. And give it another quick bubble. And not the rim.
and I'll just keep on with that process. I won't bore you with trying to fill the remaining jars. I'll put you on pause and come back just as soon as I have them all in the pot. Okay, I have all my jars filled. They are in my hot water bath. And just as when you can your beans, if you watched my other video, you saw that I placed a tray in the bottom of my pressure canner. You never want your canned items sitting directly on the bottom of your pan. Again, they could get too hot and break. So I have a rack down in the bottom and I did not get six jars. I did get five, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to put the lid on my pot, trap in all that heat, and bring it up to a boil. Once it starts boiling, again, a rolling boil, just like when we were making our jam, I will time it for 10 minutes. I will turn it off the heat, let it sit for about another five or 10 minutes so it gradually comes down from the rolling boil. And then I'll take them out of the pot, set them on a towel to let them cool out of direct air. And uh, I'll show you the finished product when it's all done. It has processed for 10 minutes and it has set just until the um, worst of the rolling boil has died down. And now I'm going to carefully, oh my stars, look at that y'all. I'm going to carefully take the five jars, being careful not to touch them together five jars out of the boiling water, also known as the hot water bath. Have you ever seen anything so pretty? Ladies and gentlemen, five beautiful jars of strawberry lemonade jam. And that's how we reuse, repurpose, recycle, and use up on the Hitch Chick Urban Homestead. Thank you for joining me and Jam and Jellies as we prepare for another day at the farmer's market here in a couple of days. Have a good afternoon and we'll see you later. And don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget, if you have already subscribed, please do not hit that subscribe button again as it will eliminate your subscription status. Also hit that notification bell so you never miss a single video. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, there went a ping. We love to hear that ping. Thank you from Hitchachick Urban Homestead and Jam and Jellies.